Hello class, good evening and welcome to our second video tutorial. This evening we're going to look at implications of information in business. So get your act together and let's take off. First of all, information processing, as we know, has transformed society. Um, you are IT personnel and you can attest to this. Today, if your phone is not with you, if you don't get the daily updates on whatever, I mean, you are lost. We get information from the news items to uh, sales to businesses of our daily work. And just like we are also getting information through this medium on education. So from business perspective, there has been a huge shift towards increasing automated business processes and communication. Currently, how many businesses that people are trying to remove human interfaces from business where you deal with systems. So that becomes less corrupt and less cumbersome. So access to information and capability of information processing has helped in achieving greater efficiency in accounting and other business processes. So in fact, the business world is actually changing. Thank God due to IT. And that is why, um, why we are here. Now let's look at functions of information system in business. First of all, a complete business information system accomplishes the following functionalities that I want us to look at. First of all, collection and storage of data. Take a supermarket app, daily transaction of sales, okay, as he generates the receipt. It accounts to how many people are buying. It reduces stock. Um, that means account for stock. Draw. I mean, everything that you need to do within the business is done there. So it transforms this data into business information useful for decision making. So after it has collected all the data it requires, it transforms them by processing to let the manager know which item is moving faster which item is still delaying. I mean, uh, you can predict the market trend using this data. And then provide controls to safeguard data. Apart from that, we have business systems also provide the necessary control so that data is safeguarded. That means security, physical, and what? That is uh, using software infrastructure to actually safeguard information. Automate and streamline reporting. Business information also allows you to draw information. Today, accountant only needs to configure their system to get what? The information needed for presentation, your cash flows, try balances, and those stuff. You only configure and print it from the system. You don't need books to calculate them again. So let's look at the uses. Summary, um, five uses of information by business and other organizations. So let's look at this. First of all, planning. IT or information systems are required seriously at a planning stage. It is the most important, that is information is the most important ingredient in decision making. At the planning stage, you require the business, the assets, liabilities, plans and machinery, properties, suppliers, customers, competitors, market and market dynamics, and physical policy, um, that is physical policy changes of the government. So here, emerging technologies that are coming also plays a major role. So in fact, in planning an IT system, all these factors must come into play for you to decide on what kind of information technology or information system you need to deploy. Without these, then, your planning will fall short of what? The necessary, uh, the requirement that you require. So information is very necessary at the planning. Apart from planning, how do you record business data? So business processes these days involve recording information about each transaction or event. If you have run a supermarket, a pharmacy shop, even a fitting shop, IT shop, you don't keep records of your stock. 
Very soon, you will find out that your stock is gone and yet the money isn't there. IT system helps you to collect the daily transactions of these what, operations. Take the banking for instance. IT, by the press of a button, you will know your daily transaction deposits, withdrawals, um, investment, and all that within the day. It doesn't take you a month or days to figure that out. Apart from this, we have controlling. Because you get these data in real time, you need information that will control what? Send the feedback and make sure that the necessary uh, actions can be taken to safeguard the business. So a business needs to set up an, an information filter so that only filtered data is presented to the middle and the top management. You cannot put a daily transaction in a bank to the bank manager. He doesn't need it. But the bank manager requires the volume of transaction that was carried out in a summary form. Okay? This ensures efficiency at the operational level and effectiveness at the tactical and strategical level. So as the operation managers will require the daily transaction, today how many people came to me? By the system, the manager doesn't require how many people came to the business, but rather the information required by top management for tactical and strategical decision making. So this is what we call then measuring. So a business measures its performance metric by collecting and analyzing sales data, cost of manufacturing, and profit ends. If you are running a manufacturing company, the information system you deploy should be able to provide you cost of manufacturing vis-a-vis -vis sales and the profit you earn. This gives you information which I tend to concentrate on and the focus of the business in the future. It's very important. Decision making is one of the major crafts of business or major trust of business. Now, decision making information includes the socioeconomic impact of competition. Who are your competitors? Globalization. Where is your market? Democratization. How you can effectively let others work. Well, promote some sort of democracy where decision making is not only uh, dwell at the top management and the effect of all these factors on the organizational structure. So decision making is necessary, but you can take appropriate decision based on the information system you deploy. Now let's look at basic information theory. And then we're saying that the multi-dimensional information evolved from the so many areas. One of them is operation research, our operations and management research, organizational behavior, and when you take computer science, like us, we are interested in data and file structure, data theory design and implementation, computer networking, because most of these information systems are stored on a network, okay, where people can assess. And then we have expert systems and artificial intelligence, especially at the top management decisions, such as management information system and decision support systems all these we're going to talk about them later in the course now let's look at information system efficiency the factors arising as an outcome of information process help speed up business events and achieving greater efficiency in fact the main aim of deploying it systems is to make business faster and efficient, okay? IT system makes something that will take you three days to be done in an hour. So directly and immediately link it to systems. You need to reach a customer, a simple IT system portal that will let you send a message or send documents to the customer. Saves a lot. Your fuel cost and everything is saved. Fast communication of an order. As and when your stock depletes, you have a portal that you can send to your supplier to supply you in a matter of seconds, and that will be done. Electronic transfer of funds. Let's look at our country. Currently, mobile money platforms, internet banking has made it so easy that you don't need to withdraw large volumes of money to do transactions. In fact, you'll be 
attracting armed robbers. But we rather make use of electronic platforms where monies can be transferred from one bank to another or one platform to another without any hassle. And then we have electronic solicited pricing. Here, you can determine the prices of the commodity you are selling on the internet from several portals. That will inform you how much you sell yours so that you don't price yourself out of the business. This is all due to or efficiency or an efficient information system deployment. Why is the need for information systems? First of all, managers make decisions. And in making decisions, you take fourfold path. Understanding the need for decision or the opportunity. Preparing alternative course of action. Evaluating all alternative courses of action. And then deciding the right path for implementation for anything you do information is key and that information will help fashion your final decision and that is what we are talking about here so first of all let's look at some of the services provided by enterprise applications so some of the services provided by an enterprise enterprise applications include first online shopping how many of us patronize that online shopping is coming to play in our part of the world, it is still coming up, and I know in the next two years, three years, online shopping will be what? Will be boom, will be a boom. So online shopping, billing, payment processing, and then interactive product catalog. You can shop and observe all the catalog of what? Clothing, uh, clothing and textiles. We have shoes. Um, in fact, you can shop anything online by Examine the catalogs in there. We have content management, such as entertainment sites. Another site that provides what? Content to us. So customer relationship management is a software that is used to manage customers or customer information. Then we have manufacturing and other business processes integration. Currently, we have computer-aided manufacturing. That helps you to design very fine products. Okay? by even simulating them using 3D. That helps you to be on top of your whatever you deal with. We have IT services management, such as the cloud, Internet of Things, and all the other emerging trends of IT. So here, uh, let's continue. So enterprise resource management, that is a one integrated software management that enable business to encompass almost every part of it okay we might we have human resource management that is a software that is used to what uh, manage the human resource of an organization and then we have business intelligence management that helps managers to study the trend and then formulate policies for future of a business but business collaboration and security where uh, professionals within the business can collaborate in a form of a project management. And then we have form automation. Where form? Let's take a hospital for instance. You go at the entrance, someone takes your vital statistics, push it to the next person, you go and see a doctor, doctor fills a form, you go to the lab, your form is there. So gradually we are moving into a car, what, paperless system where all these processes are automated and say your data is saved on an information system now basically these applications we've mentioned intend to model the business processes that is how the entire organization works and these tools work by displaying manipulating and storing large amounts of data and automating the business processes with these what data. Now let's look at the characteristics of information systems. So first, it should be based on long-term planning. Information system is not something you do just for a year or two. Okay, though you can update it, but you should have a long-term plan for it. And then it should provide a holistic view of the dynamics and the structure of the organization. You don't look at just one part of the organization to, de to design your information systems. It should be holistic, encompassing every part of the business. 
and integrating all of them. It should work as a complete and comprehensive system covering all interconnected subsystems within the organization. So let's assume that you are an organization that manufacture and sell particular product. Your manufacturing, your sales department, your engineering department, your accounts department, all should link up and your information system should provide a portal for all these departments to really um, help collaborate the business. So that's exactly what we're talking about here. And it should be planned in a top-down way as the decision makers or the management should actively take part and provide clear direction at the development stage of the information system. So it should be based on the need of strategic, operational, and tactical information of managers of an organization. So here, that's what we say. It should be planned from the top management to the lowest of the organization. That information system should be planned. People may think that, okay, if someone is a gate man or a security, what information do you provide? That gate man or the security looks at the, make sure that your environment is secure. So integrating a CCTV camera into the whole system is very necessary. Okay, so that information system must encompass everyone. Now it should also take care of exceptional situations by reporting such situations. Let's take example. In a school management system where somebody attempts to change grades, that system to have a reporting system that report to the head or another head of department or even what because we have academic heads of department deans and others all these must receive that system and make sure that such a change is approved if someone tries to do anything to the system at the in the organization the information system should be able to trigger certain processes that will let what such things come out that's why we are saying that you should be able to take care of exceptional situations by reporting such situations most of these situations I'm talking about here involves what security and controls. Now, it should be, uh, be able to make forecasts and estimates and generate advanced information, thus providing a competitive advantage. So decision makers can take actions on the basis of such predictions. That's why initially I said that an information system to help you predict the trend so that you can be ahead. Other than that, you always be behind with your competitors. You should be able to design product that will put you ahead. So if you're an organization that you have a good IT system, the probability of you always staying on top of each other, uh, of your competitors become more greater. Let's take the mobile telephony. At a point, we were just making calls. People design a means of what? Now developing SMS apps, that we could send messages, then it came, we now send money through. So imagine, because in Ghana, MTN took the lead. Look at how many customers MTN is having. The rest are finding it difficult to catch up, okay? Because they provide certain lock-in in such a way that when you use the other networks, I mean, transaction mobile money or such thing become very expensive because of the cross-platform uh, charges. But, MTN, though they are still charging, but because they have larger base of the customers, they are still in business. Vodafone is trying to make everything possible to make it free. Even that, they are still far behind MTN. Such, such is what we call staying on top of the business. So it should also create linkage between all subsystems. So your information system, like I said, should provide the link between accounts, sales, engineering, and all the other departments of the organization. Based on this, right decision can be made based on an integrated view of the data, not just one-sided view. Now, it should also allow easy flow of information through various subsystems, thus providing redundancy and duplicity of data. During your database class, I don't know whether you've done that, you'll be told that data should be saved only once within the organization. We don't have to repeat the same information differently. 
One information should be there, but it should be able to assess by all people. That is what we call efficient information system. So that you save space. Okay? Yes. Although the information system is an integrated, complete view, it should be made in such a way, in such a flexible way that it could be easily split into smaller subsystems as and when required. Every IT system is a subsystem. So that if a sales person log into the system, he should get access to the sales department, but not the entire what uh, data of the organization. A sales person doesn't need to know the account. He doesn't need to know the manufacturing information. Likewise, a manufacturer doesn't require to know everything. The same system by should provide the appropriate need for each department. So a central database is a backbone of a well-built information system. And like what I've explained so far is made possible when you have a well-built, efficient database system as the backbone of the entire information system. Now, it should be able to process data accurately and with high speed using various techniques like operations research, simulation, and heuristics, okay? So here, we're saying that every IT system should give you accurate information. It shouldn't make you down. The information is provided. And you should be able to collect, organize, manipulate, and update large amount of raw data of both related and unrelated nature coming from various internal and external sources at different periods of time. As an organization, you require information internally and externally because you're dealing with competitors. You have customers out there. You have to know customers' preference and where the trend is going so that you can stay with them. And it should provide real-time information on ongoing events without any delay. So when we say real-time information, ask them when the information is available, you should get it. Okay? Like journalists will tell you, they always want to be the first to break the news. If your information system is good, then you always get upper hand of the necessary information so that it can be the first to be there. So it should support various output formats and follow latest rules and regulations in practice. Your information should be able to receive various information in different formats, in sound, text, videos, and the rest, okay? And it should provide organized and relevant information for all levels of management. So like I said, management requires different information from middle level management and then from operational managers and then lower level what, staff. And it should aim at extreme flexibility in data storage and retrieval. In fact, data retrieval shouldn't be a cumbersome process. It should be simple providing basic authentication and what allowing access though it should be secure so let's look at some of the major enterprise applications so enterprise applications are specifically designed for the sole purpose of promoting the needs and objectives of the organization so enterprise applications provide business oriented tools supporting electronic commerce enterprise communication and collaboration, and web-enabled business processes, both within a network enterprise and with its customers and business partners. So in effect, we're saying that the information system you deploy should support appropriate tools that will let customers assess information from your organization online to link with your customers, your suppliers, all the people you do business with, okay? And get the necessary information. Your information system should be able to do that for you so that you'll be able to realize the needs of the organization and stay within the objective of the organization. So let's look at the most common use 
enterprise enterprise application that we shall be dealing with. So multitude of applications come under the definition of enterprise application. And we're going to look briefly over the following applications. First of all, the management information systems. What are they? Enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, decision support systems, knowledge management systems, content management systems, executive support systems, business intelligence systems, enterprise application integration, business continuity planning, supply chain management. These are the enterprise applications that we shall be going through in our subsequent lessons. So stay tuned and then you can also read ahead of me. Thank you for joining and I believe you have enjoyed this video. Give me your feedback and on the platform so that I can respond to them. Thank you and God bless you.